We're on page three of our chapter four notes packet. We'll be covering pages three, four, and five today. Inverse functions. Recall what a domain and range are. Domain, remember, are the set of input values. Our x's. Range. The set of output values. Right. Our y's. Recall one to one function. One to one function passes the horizontal and vertical line tests. Passes VLT and HLT. For each input, there is only one output. and vice versa. For each output, there's only one input. It's input. For each input, there is only one output, and vice versa. For each output, only one input. An inverse function reverses the domain and range. An inverse function reverses the domain and the range. Notation, the inverse of a function f of x is denoted f inverse x. Looks like an exponent of negative 1 between the f and the x. It's read f inverse of x. Note, only one-to-one -one functions have inverses. How can we tell if a function even has an inverse? Well, is it one-to-one? -one? Does it pass the vertical line test? I think I said vertical line test. I meant horizontal. Does it pass the horizontal line test? Right. How can we tell if a function even has an inverse? Well, if it's a one-to-one -one function, then it will have an inverse. How do we tell if it's one-to-one? -one? If it passes a horizontal line test, then it's one-to-one. -one. Which of the following functions is one-to-one? -one? The ones that we determine are one-to-one, -one, then they will have inverses. Okay, y equals 5x minus 9. We know that's just a line. Okay, so yes. This is one to one, it would have an inverse. y equals x squared minus 9x plus 2. We know that this graph is going to be the graph of a parabola that's concave up, and it fails the horizontal line test, so no, it's not one to one, it would not have an inverse. f of x equals 3 minus 5x. We know that this is also the graph of a line, so yes. This would have an inverse. When you have an equation and you want to find its inverse, these are the steps that you take. To find an inverse, you interchange x and y. And solve for y. If the function is written in f of x notation, replace f of x with y, or write y for f of x.
We want to find the inverses of the following functions, then evaluate B and C at the given values. All right, so our, this is two-step process. Interchange x and y. So x equals y minus 7, and now we solve for y. Just add 7 to both sides. And I have x plus 7 is equal to y. So our inverse is y equals x plus 7. For b, f of x equals 3x minus 9. Write y, replace f of x with y, because we didn't have a y yet. Now, interchange x and y. So x equals 3y minus 9. And now solve for y. So add 9 to both sides. I'm not showing that. x plus 9 equals 3y. And divide by 3. So we have y equals 1 third x plus 3. And I just want to go back to uh, our original notation was an f of x form. So I want to write this as f inverse of x is equal to 1 third x plus 3. Now, there, for this, we also want to find f inverse of 4. We want to evaluate f inverse of 4. Well, we just take our f inverse of x and replace x with 4. So f inverse of 4 is equal to 1 third times 4 plus 3. So that's 4 thirds plus 3. Come on with fractions. That's 4 thirds plus 3 is equivalent to how many thirds? Think, think, think. 9 thirds and 4 thirds plus 9 thirds is 13 thirds. Oh, how we love fractions. So F inverse of 4 is equal to 13 thirds. C f of x equals 1 half x plus 1. All right, let's replace f of x with y. Switch x and y, and then solve for y. So I'll subtract 1. So I have x minus 1 equals 1 half y. And instead of dividing by a half, Dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I multiply both sides by 2. And make sure you multiply each term on the other side by 2. 2x minus 2 is equal to y. And I'll just put it back in its uh, notation. f of x will here. Our y now is f inverse of x equals 2x minus 2. Okay, now evaluate f inverse of negative 2. So we take f inverse of x and replace our x values with negative 2. I think I'll just go this way. So that's going to be 2 times negative 2 minus 2. That's negative 4 minus 2, which is negative 6. I know I didn't use the answer lines there. Okay. Well, so try these on your own. All right, so pause the video, try on your own. Does x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equal 1 have an inverse? No, this is not a function. In order to have an inverse, first it needs to be a one-to-one -one function, okay? If you're starting out with something that's not a function at all, then there's no way it can have an inverse. It has to be a function, also has to be one to one in order to have an inverse. Two, does y equal nine x plus two have an inverse? Yes. All right, this is a graph of a line. Uh, probably looks something like, has a slope of nine, like this, okay? So it is a one to one function. Three, 
does f of x equal 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 have an inverse? Well, what is this a graph of? This is a graph of a parabola, which is not one-to-one. -one. It is a function, yes, but it's not one-to-one, -one. no. Not one-to-one -one function. Find the inverse of the function y equals 3x minus 10. Okay, we switch x and y, the first thing, switch x and y, two-step process, and then solve for y. Okay, switch x and y, and solve for y. So x equals 3y minus 10. I'll add 10 to both sides. x plus 10 equals 3y. Divide both sides by 3 y equals x plus 10 divided by 3, or we can write this as y equals 1 third x plus 10 thirds. Number 5, find the inverse function of f of x equals 1 third x minus 6, and then evaluate it, f inverse of 5. Okay, here we have to first replace f of x with y, so y equals 1 third x minus 6. Next, switch x and y, x equals 1 third y minus 6. Solve for y, add 6. Again, instead of dividing by 1 third, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so multiplying by 3, I get um, 3x plus 18 equals y. And let me go back to my f of x notation. So f inverse of x is equal to 3x plus 18. Now let's evaluate f inverse of 5. 3 times 5 plus 18. That's 15 plus 18 is 33. Alright, so when you're looking for the inverse of an equation, remember, follow those two steps. Interchange x and y, solve for y. And if the equation's not in terms of y, if you had f of x, replace f of x with y first, and then interchange x and y and solve for y. Okay, what about the inverse of um, a set of ordered pairs, or looking at a graph? Well, first off, a function is one-to-one, -one, recall, if and only if each second element corresponds to one and only one first element. Remember, no duplicate y values. To find an inverse, we interchange x and y and solve for y. To find an inverse, interchange x and y. And when we're looking at an ordered pair, that's what we do. We just interchange x and y. So if the function is a set of ordered pairs, for example, 3, 6, 4, 7, 5, 2, the inverse of the function is we switch x and y. 6, 3, 7, 4, 2, 5. Oh, easy. Okay. How to find inverse function, depending on how f of x is given to us. In summary, if it's a group of set of ordered pairs, the inverse of a one-to-one -one function is formed by interchanging the x and y coordinates of each pair in the function. If it's a coordinate graph, so if it's a graph, we reflect over the line y equals x, okay, which is the same as simply interchanging the x and y's. Try to grab a different color here. Right? Here I have this. I would take each of these bolded points, interchange their x and y's. Right? I know you're all familiar with the line y equals x. Right? It's that diagonal line that bisects the first and third quadrants. So here's y equals x. We want to take this graph reflected over that line. Well, again, it's not that easy to reflect over the line, but it is easy to simply interchange your x and y coordinates. 
All right, so here we have this point here is negative 6, negative 4. So that would become negative 4, negative 6. Um, this point's negative 5, negative 1. So that would become negative 1, negative 5. This point is negative 2, 2. So switch x and y, that would be 2, negative 2. And this point here, 3, 5, interchange, 5, 3. And this point will stay right where it is. And just, and this should be here. There we go. So our original, f of x. Now we have graphed f inverse of x. So if you're looking at a graph, Take your major points, interchange their x and y values, plot those points, and then connect them. And the rule for of an inverse for an equation, you express the function in terms of x and y, interchange x and y, solve for y, replace y with f inverse of x. Now, to verify functions and their inverses, we have to go through what's called a composition. All right. To verify that f of x and f inverse of x are inverses, you must show that f composition of f inverse of x and is equal to x, sorry, and uh, f inverse of f of x is equal to x. So you have two compositions to do here. Determine the inverse of f of x equals negative 7x plus 3 and use composition to verify your answer. This gets a little tricky. All right. y equals negative 7x plus 3. I first need to find f inverse of x. So I'll replace f of x with y, interchange x and y, and solve for y. Subtract 3. divide by negative 7. So I have y equals x minus 3 divided by negative 7. So f inverse of x is equal to x minus 3 divided by negative 7. Now we have two things to show. First this, that f of f inverse of x comes out to equal x. All right, so here we go. What is f inverse of x? It is x minus 3 divided by negative 7. Now we want f of that result. f of, all right, I go to f of x, replacing the x's with x minus 3 over negative 7. So this is negative 7. I'm replacing that x with x minus 3 over negative 7. Copy the rest down, plus 3. When we go to multiply here, these divide out, so we're left with x minus 3 plus 3 ah, is x. That's what we want it to be. Oops, there you go. So that came out to equal x. Now, we also have to show that f inverse of f of x is equal to x. Okay, so f inverse of f of x. Right side first, what does f of x equal? It's back over here, you can see it, it's negative 7x plus 3. And now we want f inverse of that result. So f inverse of negative 7x plus 3 I'm going back to my f inverse, which is back over here, replacing the x with negative 7x plus 3. So in place of this x, there's a negative 7x plus 3. So I have negative 7x plus 3 minus 3 over negative 7. Let's see, combining here, that's a positive 3 and negative 3 is 0. We have negative 7x over negative 7, and the negative 7s divide out, 
And lo and behold, we have x again. And that's what we wanted. So we have just verified that these are inverses. And this completes our video for tonight. Thank you.